If you've just crafted yourself an awesome looking gaming PC and you're really happy with it and then you've gone about the process of installing Windows onto it and then you've got stuck because you haven't got any Ethernet and you have no Wi-Fi connection so you're then stuck on this screen and it won't let you progress, stick with me because I'm going to show you a few different solutions for this on how to fix it really easily. I'm also going to show you how to fix Wi-Fi if you're already in Windows and you've discovered that you've got this little icon down the bottom with a cross through it on the world, there's no network connection. If you go to diagnose network problems, you'll find that you've just got no internet connection, you've got no Wi-Fi, and you're stuck. Don't worry, there are a few solutions. Obviously, you need to make sure that your motherboard supports Wi-Fi in the first place. This motherboard does. It's clearly marketed as a Wi-Fi one, so make sure that's the case. But what you'll find is in the box, there are a few things that you want to watch out for. Sometimes you might be lucky enough to find a USB thumb drive in the box. And this will be very handy because this most likely has your Wi-Fi drivers on it, which will solve your problem. So stick with me, I'll show you how to install those in a little while using this. You'll also find that there's a Wi-Fi antenna that looks something like this. You'll see it has these gold contacts on it, which basically designed to screw onto the back of the motherboard. It's important that this is installed, otherwise you won't get a good Wi-Fi signal. This screws into the back here, as you can see. Now this motherboard is obviously outside the box, you do it once it's installed in the case fully and then you screw the antenna into the back of it. You'll find that probably your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi both won't work properly without this screwed in. So it's really important that you find this and install it for this process to work properly and make sure that's fully installed and then find somewhere to just pop it on your PC so you can get a good signal. They might find different designs to this. This is a Gigabyte one, for example. This actually just plugs in, just pushes into the back of the motherboard instead of needing to be screwed in, but it's the same sort of logic. It's just an antenna to extend the range and the signal. So you'll find there's a port on the back of the motherboard. You can see a finished product here basically plugs into the top there. And once that's seated in there, then you'll get a good signal for the Wi-Fi and it will work. And hopefully that might solve your problem really easily definitely will help with signal so it's very important to put that in. Now we're at a stage where we've installed that and hopefully you know about the process for installing Windows. You've got the Windows installation media on a thumb drive and you're going about the process of installing Windows. So you plug plugging that in, rebooting your system, going into the setup here and then running through the installation steps. I'm not going to show you how to install Windows in this video, that's obviously a separate thing. But once you get to this screen and you find that you're stuck, I'm going to show you the solution for it. So the easiest thing to do, if you can, is to actually plug in an Ethernet cable. So if you've got an Ethernet cable from your router, plug it into the back of the motherboard. That will solve the issues usually most of the time because the system will identify that it's got an Ethernet connection now and you can just use that instead. But if you don't have that option, then what you need to do is head over to the motherboard's website to download the drivers. Now, obviously, you're going to need a separate machine for this, like a laptop or something else. But in a second, I'll show you how to do it with your phone. But what you're looking for is the support section and then the Wi-Fi drivers. So you can see Wi-Fi drivers here and Wi-Fi Bluetooth drivers. Obviously, you need to make sure you're on your relevant motherboard website. Download those. Now, you can do this on your phone, which makes life a lot easier because it means you don't need to worry about having access to another device like a laptop or a spare PC. You can just head over to the support pages and then follow those steps to download the drivers. You probably want to get the LAN drivers for the Ethernet and Wi-Fi drivers for your Wi-Fi at a minimum, and then you can install those, and I'll show you the process for installing them in a second. But the good thing about doing this on a Google phone or on a Android device is that you can download and extract these files because you'll find that often come zipped up and compressed. So you need to download them first of all, then when I go to open the files, open it with files by Google, and then you get the option to extract. So you can see you can extract this. Now, this is an EXE file, which means it's an application. We won't want to run it on the phone. We're not trying to do that. What we're going to use is basically setting the phone up so that it's working as an external drive. So we take the USB-C cable, plug it into the charging port on your phone, plug the other end of that cable into your motherboard, then head over to the settings section on your phone. And what you want to do is look for the USB preferences. Under there, you should find have an option here where you want to set it to file transfer mode instead of charging then you basically can then use your phone to do this. As an alternative, if you're using an iPhone, I don't know if that'll work, so maybe use a laptop, borrow a friend's laptop, or find a spare device that you can download the files on. Then you're going to want to put them onto a USB thumb drive of some sort, an external drive. 
So as I mentioned, they are compressed and they are zipped up. So what you need to do is download the files first of all, and then basically go into your downloads section. So open up the downloads folder, and then the downloads folder, right click on the compressed file and click extract all. So you see the option there for extracting all. Then what you want to do is browse and find the USB drive. So you can see a USB here, and that's the thumb drive you want to extract that to. Extract those files onto that drive. And then obviously we're going to then remove that drive from the laptop or other device that you've installed them on. Watch out, this is what we want, a DCH setup file. Obviously it'll be named slightly differently depending on your motherboard, but we're looking for the EXE file for the installation there. Install that into the back of the motherboard, plug that in, and then what you should do is then go back to your PC, then hit Shift and F10. This will bring up the command window you can see pops up here. Click on that with your mouse. Make sure you've done that, otherwise you might not be able to do the next step. And what we're going to do here is type in Explorer. If you type in Explorer and then hit Enter, you'll find that Windows Explorer pops up and it allows you to just navigate around and look at files on your system. So click on this PC and then on, click on your device. So in this case, I'm using my phone, but maybe you'd use the USB drive depending on what you're using for the files. So then you just need to find the driver file. So in this case, the EXE file and run it. And so it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Make sure, obviously, if you're using a USB drive, you haven't got loads of other files on there. It's much clearer if you haven't got loads of other things and you're trying to search for a randomly named file that might not be obvious. If you have any pop-ups like this, just click run on them and yes to extract any of the files that you need to. It might have these extra steps to it. And then if you just wait, you should find that the Wi-Fi driver files will then install on the system. Once that's done, you can then just connect to the Wi-Fi. Assuming you've got your antenna set up as from earlier, you should find it then is pretty straightforward. What I found is I had to close Explorer down, so minimize that, and then close the command prompt down. But then you'll see, now the screen has changed, and now I can connect to the Wi-Fi. So obviously entering in your Wi-Fi password, and then accessing and connecting to the Wi-Fi, and you'll then be able to go about the process of continuing on with your Windows installation. So it's relatively straightforward in this way. And obviously you've got the options. You can do it with your phone. You can do it with a laptop and a USB stick that way. And so you've got different ways to install the drivers in this instance before you get into Windows and go about the setup process. If, however, you find that this doesn't work for you, there is another way that you can go about this and another thing that you can do so you can install Windows without needing internet. So there's another tip for you that'll be helpful too. Hit Shift and F10, bring up the command prompt, and instead of typing in Explorer, you type in OOBE backslash bypass NRO. So follow that step and then hit enter. What this will do is it'll actually restart Windows again. So it'll restart your PC. It'll go back into the installation process. But in this instance, once you go through the steps, what you'll find is you can do it now and basically access it so you can click, I don't have internet. Now, obviously I've already installed the Wi-Fi drivers so you can see those. You won't see that on your screen but you now have the option to continue with limited setup, which means that you don't need to worry about being connected to the internet and you don't need to worry about logging into your Microsoft account and you can just create an offline way of doing it. So this then allows you to go about the installation of Windows that way. So this is another option. The Explorer way is the easier way to do it because it basically means you can log into your Microsoft account, which I would recommend doing. But that is an alternative if you want to do it. And you should then find that you are happily in Windows. So hopefully that's sorted that out. Now you might find there is another problem. You've got a slightly different setup where, for example, your drivers are slightly different. So you might find when you download your wireless drivers, instead of being in an EXE file that you can run, instead when you extract the files onto your PC or onto your thumb drive, that it's just a list of different system files and DLL files. If you hit the start menu and then search for device manager and then go under network adapters, if you find the Wi-Fi one, it usually will have a warning triangle against it to say it's not got a driver. You can then search for the drivers, look for the specific folder on your PC. So go to the download section and find that folder that you've extracted. Or alternatively, you copy where that is 
and then paste it into the folder location. You can then choose to update the drivers for your Wi-Fi from that particular folder and it will look for the relevant files. In my instance, it doesn't work because it's already installed, but you might find this is a good solution. Once you've got drivers installed, I'd recommend using Intel's driver and support assistant. Even if you're not using an Intel system, Intel Wi-Fi is actually present in a lot of different machines. You can use this to make sure you've got the latest Bluetooth drivers and wireless drivers and maybe LAN drivers as well. And then you'll find that you should be set up for the future and you can game away happily on your new PC. Hopefully this has helped. Let me know in the comments if it has. And thanks very much for watching.